What is going on, Cigar Club family? Welcome to another episode on the Cigar Club podcast. Today, I'm joined with my dear friend, Mr. Alan hey, buddy. Rubin. How's it going, How are you buddy? doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Dude, I'm sitting here. I've got Gatekeeper rolling. And nice. I'm talking with you. The doors are open because it's a beautiful day outside. You're at the new I, offices. I've, I'm at the new office. Uh, so no Looks complaints good. on my end. Do we like the Cigar Club backdrop? We love it. Good. All of us in the good. audience here, we all love it. Yeah. <laughs> all one of us in the audience here is loving it. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, dude, I can't believe it's taken, I don't know, maybe 15 podcast episodes to get you on with your busy schedule. Um, I asked to be on the first travels. one. I asked to be on this. I literally asked to be on every one. And you're like, no, we have someone more important than you. And then you call me one day. And, no, no, no. You call me and you're like, hey, can you be on today? I'm like, I'm traveling. I'm sick. I'm this. And I'm like, now you want to have me on like 30 podcasts later? I wanted the audience to build and the traction to build before we wasted your time with our podcast. You're so full of it. No, that's not true. That's not true. Nobody wastes time on the Sparkle podcast. But, um, dude, we got a lot to cover. We were on the phone mm-hmm. earlier, and I gave you like three high-level things I wanted to talk about. But um, I don't remember any all, of them, but I'm here for good. it. Good. I don't want you to remember any of them because mm. I want you to have to shoot from the hip. Okay. I can do that. And everything you say is Fire being away. recorded, dude. I'm just going to remind yeah, you. It's not, it's, not, it's not live, so we can always it's not it live, out, though. so it's okay. Yeah. That is true. Um all right, first of all, let's get started with what in the world you're smoking, because that is something I do want to know. So right now I'm smoking the new Alec and Bradley Wagyu oh, sh- shoot. exclusive that we did. Um, this is the second one or third one I've had since the production has come in. They're shipping nationwide now, and I love the cigar. I'm very happy with it. And that's an exclusive you guys did with JR, right? Yes, yes. Can they, is, it still, is it still up on the site? It is still up on the site right now. I think we did 500 boxes and we're nearing the end of those 500 boxes now. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm i going back and forth with Griff. I think I'm either just going to buy one for myself or be nice and split it with him. Uh, but I need to make my mind I up bought, in, like, in the next, I don't know, 45 minutes. I, um, I bought my own box from JR. Because we ordered exactly 500 on the dot, so I ordered my own. <laughs> you didn't add yourself any buffer? I always I always try to. I always tell Ralph, like, hey, can we get a couple extra boxes of everything we make? And he never does it. So I end up just buying, <laughs> you know, I buy Pinkies out. I buy Wagyu. It is what it is. I'm happy to support, though, so it's fine. Absolutely. So, okay, mm-hmm. let's can we break down Wagyu real quick? Which, which, by the way, I always say Wagyu, but I know it's Wagyu. So feel free it's to Wagyu. correct me throughout this. The R works beautiful. The wrapper looks beautiful. I've already seen posts yeah. of people like smoking it, and like three quarters of it is ash because of the roll. Oh my god! Look at that box. box right there. Yeah, it's this a cool is a, box. this is a great note. If you're listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple Music, thank you. But also, you can watch this podcast on YouTube and see that beautiful box Alec just showed. How? how okay, how'd you come up with the name? What's the details on the sticks? And how does well, that work happen? You already know how it works with our process, right? When it comes to me and Bradley is Bradley comes up with the names and the majority of the artwork, right? Yep. So he came up with Wagyu A5 Plus. We kind of have been on this Japanese journey a little bit recently, obviously. We had Kintsugi and now we went into Wagyu. He's had the name Wagyu for a little bit. We thought it was super cool for this project. So then when it came to the blend, I was actually looking for something that complemented like a nice fatty piece of steak, right? So it's got this great Mexican wrapper on it. It's got a bunch of Nicaraguan in the binder and filler. Mm. And this thing is just like, it's earthy, it's sweet, it's nutty. It's got a bit of funk to it. Super great, super great blend. I love this. I love this cigar. What, uh, where'd you guys make this one? We made this one at Placencia in Honduras. Cool. That's like a, I guess between that and rice, this are your like two flagship it's where the most of, most yes. things come out of most things, I should say. Mm-hmm. That's where the majority of our product comes out of those two factories. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, anyway, I'm excited to get my hands on that cigar. Um, I know we just started. I don't know if you heard the podcast a few weeks back, but me and Pew were breaking down the new Pinkies out. Speaking of exclusives, 
the cigar actually, club Actually, I think I did. I I did see that you were both smoking it. Um, yeah, I don't new remember one. the pinky. Yes, the new one. Yes, which I love that cigar. I actually think that the new size is better than the old size potentially. Uh, just, it might just be different, but I it's probably more my palate. The new size. The pinky. I agree, and. I did them side by side because I was so curious because it's really fun to see the, the similarities and differences. Yeah. That new size, I just love how it jumps right in. Like you light that thing up oh, and you're yeah. like, we're here. We are, we are well, live. We are here. We are in the cigar. Well, here, here's the funny thing, like, especially for us. When you're comparing the same blend within two sizes, you are now nitpicking. It's not like right. you're comparing two different cigars. You are comparing the same exact cigar just in two different sizes and you're like, ah, this one's a little more my, my palate than that one. It's the same blend. It is essentially right. the same thing. There's very right. slight differences at that point. But still, we do this, and it's, it's funny. Yeah. Well, and it's like, it just gives you a new perspective almost on the blend. Mm -hmm. It's like, maybe you'll notice things you didn't notice in a different Vitola that you're now noticing here because of small well, it's, it's, variables throughout the process. Right? Well, it's definitely punchier, right? It definitely yeah. punches you a little bit more on the palate because of the smaller ring gauge, smaller size, you're going to get, well, also, as you mentioned, I think on that podcast, the way that the leaf sits in the cigar, you're going to get a little bit more of the end of the leaf that has a little bit more of that nicotine content, a little bit more of that extra flavor buildup. And yep. yeah, you're going to get, that's exactly what's, you know, you're going to get on that cigar, especially on that smaller size. Yeah. And it's something that I'm looking forward to the, people in our family at cigar club to smoke especially the ones that got the original one that hopefully saved one yeah if you smoking them right at one after each other or even at the same time is a really cool experiment into how size uh can change the blend but also when the blend is consistent how you can still taste the same like core of the cigar which Did you could you do with any? any cigar line uh i have five left i have zero well, I will send you. I smoked, I smoked. I smoked all of them. Do you have any I of the will, new one left? No, those are those. <laughs> those went, yeah, dude. Those, are, those are so good. I know. I I know. And they just look so good too, which is maybe an argument why I shouldn't have smoked them because I just like looking at them. But then I'd go to grab a cigar and I'm like, oh, but this one looks so amazing, and I would just grab it and smoke it. When when we talked about making the, that cigar and then we were like let's just do some something that we did a fan tail we did the fully closed foot yeah i thought like i kind of thought we were joking at first when we decided that and then we went all in you were like yeah we went all in we were like we're really going to do something different here and that closed foot i don't think i've ever had a cigar with more of a closed foot than that dude that, thing dude, is, that is a shut. sealed foot yeah it's a sealed foot that is like a and, vault door it really is, but as soon as you put the flame to it and start light, lighting it up, it opens right up. It's very, it actually I think works better yeah. than something that might have a little bit of more, more openness on the foot. I think construction yeah, wise, it was, it was crazy how well that worked. Oh man, and well, overall construction of that entire cigar. I know I, I've smoked several samples that went beyond the halfway point of the cigar before it it ashed, and that like with tapping in between, it's like all right, it doesn't want to go, it doesn't want to go. Uh, and those are on samples. Like, if the samples are yeah. that well constructed, I, I can't mm -hmm. even imagine once this production is finished what that's going to taste like. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited for that cigar. Pinky's out, the pinky. 2.0, but actually, like, when are we looking at a point release date on because that? Because it's half the size almost. Uh, sometime in the fall. The size. Sometime in the that's fall. Okay. Okay. I should be asking you that record. question. <laughs> I know, but you have a better memory than I do. I'm 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 honored, and my wife would disagree. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> two things. One, I'm smoking Gatekeeper because I love the cigar. Mm -hmm. Hashtag number seven cigar of the year. Um, first question is, can you see all my bourbons up here? I don't have. I've got. I can like see the Weller seven on the and shelf. the few. I can see okay. the Weller and the few. So I've got Weller. I've got the few cigar club pick. I got an Eagle Rare store pick. Mm -hmm. A 1792 bib store pick. A Sazerac mm -hmm. Rye a new riff pick and the bourbon junkie sagamore spirits. Yeah. That was a lot. I threw you, but what yeah, am I pairing I with it. this? You're the pairing master. I'm throwing you on the fly on the spot. What am I pouring? One of the two Buffalo trace products, either the Eagle rare or the Weller, I think would go perfectly with that cigar. All right. I'm going to go Weller. 
All right. Are you while I grab it, right, right I'm now? doing it right now. What what time is you it? Didn't tell me what, you didn't tell me we're, we're in the PM. <laughs> Dude, we're I don't in the have PM. any alcohol up here. That's okay. That's a lie too. You have your infinity bottle up there. No, it's not up here anymore. I got scotch. There you go. Get some fittage in your life. Um, actually, I feel like that would actually go really well with Wagyu. I don't have a <laughs> right? Like, though. well, you have a mouth. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, okay, here's what I want to know about Gatekeeper. We all we all saw the announcement. Sorry, I got like random people walking by. I'm just checking on them. It's um, okay. We we all saw the announcement. Um, about Gatekeeper, which uh, was first made at the EB Creo factory, uh, and you're now moving production. And this is something I really want to focus on this podcast because I love getting into the details well beyond like, what new is coming out? What about this? What about that? This is like the what I think makes really strong brands and blenders stand apart and why I think people like you are such beasts in this industry. You're going to move production of your number seven cigar of the year from mm-hmm. one factory and country to a new factory and country. Yep. What in the world does that entail? How long have you been working on this? Like, Cause I'm assuming you didn't just like, announce it and now you're going to start working on it. Like it's probably been a long time coming. How does that even happen? Yeah. Like, are you smoking and that's new production or, 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 or old? Are you smoking new production or old? Okay. Old production. Old. old so production. yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, this was a conversation for a while and then making it happen actually wasn't as difficult as you may think. Okay. So on the gatekeeper blend, I don't, I can't, let's just make up a number. 75% of that tobacco is coming from Placencia anyways, right? All the Nicaraguan tobacco is coming from Placencia and the binder and filler aside from the one leaf of Dominican is Nicaraguan, right? Then we okay. got the Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. So the only things we needed or the only thing we, we needed to get over to Placencia to reblend that cigar, not reblend it, but, you know, just make sure it was perfect. Work it into their get, system. Yeah. Yeah. Work it into their system was get the Dominican filler over to Placencia. So we went to the same source that Ernesto, uh, I think Bradley and Ralph went down on that trip. They met with the, um, the guy that they were sourcing the tobacco from, bought the tobacco, had it shipped to Honduras. And then remember the last time I was, I think we were on the phone. I was in Honduras. Yep. That's, That's what you're what doing. I was on. That's what I was working on. Yeah. Oh, Cause you're like, no, I'm not buying anything new. I'm just smoking productions of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what do you mean? You should blend this. You, you should blend that. You should do this. You should work on this. You should work on that. Dude, I, I'm think, like, uh, I feel like every, I'm busy. every time <laughs> I'm busy doing other stuff. Every time you go to Honduras, I always text you like, can you just make me a quick cigar? <laughs> just for you me. You do. <laughs> Pinky's out. Um, uh, and, that's, and that's how things like Pinky's out happens. It's like, here, exactly. this is one I've been working on. It's like, why is that amazing and not already a line? And you're like, I don't know. Do you want it? And I'm like, I shouldn't even be offered this. So obviously. That's pretty much how the conversation went. And I think that's like the second time we ever talked. Maybe first. Maybe first. May, like actually maybe first, I think. I think, I think it was first or second, but time, yeah. I, I really think it might have been the first. Yeah. No, which I is think absolutely right. I think nuts. I know. We we came to We've a, a, a blend decision. Deep. Yeah, we came to a blend decision on one phone call ever, which was insane. And I, that I, was fantastic. I, I still love that whole story of how that happened because like when you sent me you're like, Okay, I, I have a blend that you're going to pick, but I'm gonna send you a couple just mm-hmm. just to uh appease you. You know, I'll 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 send you a couple, but I already know which one you're gonna pick. And you sent me a few of them. And I smoked him, and I remember texting you, being like, "Yeah, blend 16. And you're like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I already, I already pulled it aside because I know that's what you're going to pick because it's right up your wheelhouse." Yeah. It's a, Hi. it's well, from what you told me from the conversation, I knew what you liked. That was in your wheelhouse from what we talked about, and it just fit perfectly. And I love the cigar myself, so yeah. it just worked out. Yeah. Like how how do you even when you're taking like a profile or an idea? I actually want to back this up a little bit. You yeah. wait. Should we finish the gatekeeper thing first, or do you want to jump? Oh yeah. This? Oh sorry. No. Let's finish the gatekeeper. No, thing. no. I jumped. That was my ADD, not yours. All right. Well, um, put two of us on one stream. Well, this well, is what you get. Yeah. Exactly. So, what do we need to jump back to on the gatekeeper? Okay. So, I was in Honduras. Was working on that project. You got all um, the same tobacco. We had all the majority of it was from Placencia, anyways, right? So, okay. by the time we got there, 
they had already rolled a few different samples. The, the hardest part was figuring out exactly what percentage of the Dominican we needed to add um, to make sure that the blend stayed identical. Yep. And we worked on that for three days before we said, okay, let's get moving on this, start putting things into production a little bit, had the sample sent over to the U.S. once they aged a little bit and smoked it. Everything was great, full production. And now the uh, the next order that we have coming in will be the, um, new. The, the new Honduran release. But everything that we had at PCA was already that production also. And it okay. was great. It was wonderful. Okay. Yeah. We well, don't have one one complaint, not one. Everyone seriously. actually absolutely loved it. They loved it. But that's got to I mean, that was your, your and Bradley's second cigar you ever released. So yeah. it's not even like it's an Alec Bradley cigar. It's an Alec and Bradley cigar. So it has an mm-hmm. even more intimate feel to you. Mm-hmm. Was that a really like nerve-wracking thing to consider doing? Like you just got number seven. Yeah. This is your second no. cigar you ever released. And now you have to move factories. Yeah. And people yeah, have so- an expectation and profile me, already for that cigar you can't change let me explain why we move factories in the first place sure. we didn't even cover that so ernesto obviously got number one with encore two three years ago yep. and then he gets pledged number one this last year not just that he's making gatekeeper that gets number seven and then i think crown heads was making a cigar with him that got top 25 also I don't remember which one it was at the moment. So Kappa and Special. Yes. So in one year, his factory got three cigars on the top twenty-five. The guy is slammed. His factory is slammed. He is yep. like they are, they are working like double overtime there. So when it was, we were trying to get product, trying to get product. It was very tough. Um, and then I think him and Ralph were talking one day, and Ralph was like. Would it be easier if we pulled, like, if we moved the production? And I think Ernesto kind of was just like, yeah, that would take a load off. Like, that would make my life a little bit easier. Yeah. And so it was, it was just kind of like a mutual conversation, like a mutual agreement. Like, hey, this is what needs to happen. And, and he know, helped us me, every step of the way. Right. And to me, that also shines a little bit of a light into this industry as a whole, too, and working mm-hmm. with good people and people you enjoy working with. That's mm-hmm. like a, a friend saying, dude, you, you have a lot of other things you need to be focusing on and mm-hmm. we can still make this happen. Like we can take this off of you. Wait, you mean the That's conversation a- we had the other day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the conversation we had the other day. But yeah. I feel like that goes such a long way. Like that, that's mm-hmm. deeper than, oh, we're not getting enough cigars anymore. So we're moving production because you can't keep up. It's like, this no, has to be like kind of a all. burden on you right now. And we can still make this happen at the level we mm-hmm. need it to be and want it to be. And we can make your life easier. And he was probably yeah. like. I, <laughs> I, I, had, a, I, I will, had a friend ask me the other day, would you work with Ernesto again? And I looked at him. So like, number one, yes, I love Ernesto. I'd work with him again. Number two, we got number seven. Like, I think that's a no-brainer when I work with Ernesto again. No, you know, seven wasn't really good enough. We're going to need to find somebody who can get us in the top you know, five. Top yeah. five. He didn't quite cut it. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, lo- I love that story because I don't, that's nobody really. And I also love that there's like an actual press release and stuff on that because I would think there's a lot of brands that you get number seven at a specific factory. You're not going to want to advertise that you are changing that factory because of people, I don't know, being fearful that it's not going to be the same cigar, but of the course. level of confidence and like, no, you can trust this name and the people behind it, that we are going to give you the exact same product and the incredible experience every time. Like that mm-hmm. level of um, like confident, like really good confidence, not like a, an arrogant confidence, but like strong confidence is I think what people love so much about Alec Bradley, Alec and Bradley cigars. You, you know, that wasn't like an easy thing to, you know, decide to I, do. I was floored, actually, when you, I'm like, what? Yeah, I mean, it's I a scary the, feeling. Like, meetings, the conversations around that with the whole team, like. Yeah, that's not an easy decision to make. And then having to tell everyone is even more difficult, difficult but, you know, you got to deal with integrity. So yeah, you can't not tell your consumers what's going on. You can't not tell your retailers what's going on. It, do you th- is that something 
obviously you were kind of born into this industry in a lot of ways. Yeah. Is that, is decisions like that something that you lean on your dad and his experience and Ralph's experience for and, and things that you're learning? Or is this just stuff you've inherently picked up from working with him over all these years where it's like, I really think we should do this. And it's kind of a mutually agreed upon decision. Like how, how does that work? Because you've been able to grow up watching your dad grow this business into mm-hmm. what it is today. And you now, you and Bradley now growing your business in, into what it's becoming. Were you smoking cigars in 2011, 2012? Uh, no. Okay. 2012 so, I was, but right after Prince Auto won. Yeah. So I started Prince smoking Auto got number one. Yeah. And so the year to two after that, we had grown massively as a company and I was around in ways, not like entrenched in it. I was around sure. in ways. I was around a lot of what was going on. I was in the office the day that we got number one or that my dad got number one. And we were so busy trying to sell product that we didn't realize that the production quality was going down. Hmm. And once we caught it, it was too late trying to fix everything. Product was already on the market. And my dad, I think, didn't sleep for like six months to a year trying to get all this stuff fixed. And one day he called Cigar Aficionado and said, hey, I'm coming in for an interview. I know that doesn't usually how isn't usually how it works. You don't you know, people don't tell you that, you know, you're (laughs) you're going to interview interview them today. Yeah. yeah, But this needs to happen. This is a story that needs to, like, be, be told. So he went and flew to New York and just admitted to everything like everything that was happening us trying to fix it all the admitted to everything as in our production quality has slipped due to demand yes. and yes. we are we're aware that the cigar is not of the quality it needs to be yeah and it wasn't just prince Auto, it was other things also uh, things that were <laughs> yeah coming out wow. of racist cabanas at that time yeah so because right. we were just growing so so rapidly and right. the, and the factory was a, is a boutique factory so that it was growing rapidly too And him doing that and owning up to like what happened and me living through watching that has made my decisions and what to do a lot easier. Wow. So yeah, it just, it seeing that I know how I have to be, you know, as a businessman, as you know, a person in this industry on like the way people reacted to what he, what he said, like, I was like, okay, this is the way you have to do in business. You have to be open and honest and admit to your mistakes. Or even though the gatekeeper thing wasn't really a mistake, you just have to be honest. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I That is the exact answer to that question. Then it's something that was modeled for you in yeah. the, on the biggest stage in cigars that mm-hmm. you can have where all yeah. the spotlight's on you and you're like, we screwed up or it's not the same and we're going to own that. And we're going to actually like, tell you all about Mm. it and his thing was so much bigger that it made this so easy if that makes sense yeah which yeah to me from where i sit even just the gatekeeper factory switch seems like a big thing when you Mm -hmm. put it in perspective like that like gat was but i've watched this company be transparent on things way bigger than changing factories for a cigar yeah. This is what we do. This is how we act. This is this is who we are at, at the core mm-hmm. of our company. That that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's super cool that not that the whole thing with Prince Otto hop, happened, but it showed me a path of how I need to act and behave and you know deal with integrity within this industry, which is super cool. Yeah, and obviously now our production is great, better than ever. Our quality is is insane, especially out of Rice's Cubana. So, it's it's I love that factory. Yeah, I, I know you do. It's, <laughs> I know you do. It's a great factory, it, and it's still a very boutique, family like feel factory. It's such a cool factory. What um it, is that? Is Rice's the one you find yourself at most when you're in Honduras, or is Placencia Honduras the one you find yourself at most? It's pretty split, honestly, between the two. It's just there's different things going on at both of them. Um, Placencia is just this huge, well-oiled machine that is still feels like super close and like a giant family. But then Raices feels like super boutique and 
I kind of can like walk around and do things I probably sh- couldn't do at Placencia and get away right. with more. And like, it's just more of that small boutique feel, and it's super cool. So it's more, it's like, it's the true like home factory for you. Like it's, it's the yeah, it's true like, extension of Alec Bradley where you yes. can kind of wa- like walking into Alec Bradley offices, you're walking into Rice's and you're like, let's have some fun today. I'm grabbing exactly. this. I'm pulling this tobacco out of this, but I'm not asking anybody and I'm just walking over here, minding my own business, doing what I want. I can't, I can't is... ask anyways. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so I, I just, just do it. You want to say <laughs> mm-hmm. what? Okay. What is that like? Because difficult every time i come back from whether it's dr in freaking miami uh mm-hmm. where i grew up too i'm always like i need to learn better spanish i need to learn better spanish How, what what is it like like you are blending full national launch cigars multiple times a year and doing quality control the rest of the time of year and everything else that goes into having a cigar brand and brands what is there? Have you ever had like really difficult times with the language barrier? Like, what how, what is your way around it? What is your process? Do you have somebody with you the whole time? How in depth do you get with like working with the rollers and like sitting down and talking, and communicating with them? Or is there like one main guy you work with and he translates? What is that even like? So it's two different Spanish processes. Yeah, it's two different processes. At Placencia, okay. there's oh, I always have usually like Ralph with me. We're oh, I always travel with Ralph um, for and the Ralph most part. And Ralph speaks Spanish. And Ralph speaks Spanish. Yeah. And he's, he's been in this industry since he was like 17. And, um, so at Placencia, it, we're kind of more in a boardroom setting and okay. we are, there's a bunch of different people in there. Most people speak English there. Um, the few people that don't, there's always translators and I can get my point across. And then at Raices, it's not that kind of setting. And if I'm with like, let's say, like one of the guys' name is Chavez, super cool dude. He doesn't speak any English. I don't speak any Spanish. And we just go based off of like hand gestures and like single words that we know. And we just figure it out. Yep. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Generally, like I'll have like the owner, Ugo, or I'll have Ralph there helping me. But it's actually more fun when it's just us trying to communicate and get this blend figured out. And it's it's a funny experience because it's a lot of screwing up till you get it right. But when you get it right, it's such an awesome feeling that you got it done. I, I can't imagine. You're like, wow, somehow I'm smoking this and it's exactly what I wanted. And I don't know how you understood that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think to an extent I can understand some Spanish and he can understand some English versus mm-hmm. us being able to, like, I can't speak it and he can't speak it. Like, but I think we're, our communication, like gets our, we get a point across and it's a fun process. I know that he's always laughing. I'm always laughing. It's just, it's a, it's a fun process. Yeah. I, I could totally see that. Yeah. Um, qu- quick update over here. This pairing is actually amazing. Which one did you <laughs> do? Well, the Eagle Rare? Well, Weller, or the no, Weller? I did Weller Antique because mm-hmm. I think I think the wheat, the weeded focus bourbon, is adding like this insane additional like sweetness to this blend, and yeah. it's bringing out things I've never really tasted in Gatekeeper before. Especially uh, since Gatekeeper love this does have like a, a little breadiness to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. It does go well with that weeded. Like when you said the Sagamore rye, I was like, I thought the rye would fight Gatekeeper potentially. Yeah, because that one's like super minty too. That's like yeah, staple rye. That is like, and then the few pick is like what a three or four year whiskey. It's young. It's a so little I more thought, like smoky, mm-hmm. barely. Yep. So I thought I thought that would potentially fight it. And so, then you said the seventeen ninety two Baldwin Bond store pick. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, that's going to be like a little bit more banana-y. And I didn't think that would Super really... Banana. Yeah, I didn't think that would go so well. This is... When you, when, you, when you smoke it and then you drink, it's like the perfect extension of where it leaves mm-hmm. off of the cigar because it's like bready. There's a little bit of spice. There's a, there's a touch of cinnamon somewhere in here. Um, you and, and your then cinnamon, it like, dude. The bread carries on and then you sip the weeded bourbon and it's like almost still bready but sweet on top of that mm-hmm. with those like caramel notes and it's like oh my god that's like the perfect transition of like flavors i feel like weller Dude, antique is a really easy this. pairing what yeah I, I you just always can you know whiskey so well and flavors so well i can ask you pretty much any cigar in the world not eat not alec bradley any cigar and give you like 
a handful of bourbon options and you'll always pick one <laughs> that's like right on the money um that just means i smoke and drink too much that's all it that means not- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm working on i'm working on my pairing palette everybody leave me alone that's why i'm drinking at 8 a.m it, it's been done <laughs> it's been done um <laughs> No, no. I mean, once you have a basic understanding of profiles, it makes it a lot easier. It's a lot like cooking, which I actually suck at because I don't spend the time to learn it. But um, it's like cooking. Once you understand spices and basic flavors that work well together, the yeah. rest comes a lot easier. That's the same with, with blending, same with pairing. You just have to know what the biggest part of the profile is that's going to shine when you're doing a pairing, and that makes it a whole lot easier. So when you're you saying no, like it's a- like... Sorry, go ahead. No, after you. Uh, would would you say you're more of a like complementary pairing palette or like a contrasting pairing palette? Ninety percent of the time, complementary. Cool. The only time I really yeah. contrast is when my options are limited, and if you're saying like, "Hey, what peated whiskey is going to go with what cigar?" There's no cigar that just holds up to a peated whiskey, so <laughs> or especially a heavily peated one. So you're going to want to contrast and do something that's going to counterbalance it versus trying to compete with it because there's no. You're just fighting each other at that point. So right. 90% of the time you're able to do something complimentary. When you're taking something that is just fighting very hard against each other, you want to go the opposite, in my opinion. What about sure. you? How do you do it? I might be like 60-40 complimentary. I really love two very different things. Like if I'm smoking a, a very heavy, oily, rich cigar... I love going on the lighter, fruitier, crisp spectrum of pairings, whether that's whiskey, beer, wine. Like you hand yeah, me a, a dark Maduro you, and you like a Pinot this- Grigio. Let's go to town, baby. It's like a palate cleanser to me. It's like refreshing. It's not like pairing together with the cigar, but it's like resetting you to taste more out of the cigar, I find. Yeah. So the way you do it is you like the cigar to shine. So you want yeah. something that's going to complement it in the opposite way. And all, unless you're doing a, smoking a lighter cigar, then you probably go complimentary, right? Yes, definitely. Y- yeah, or so else you, you like taste the cigar. no cigar. Yeah, you like the cigar to shine. It's how yep. you like to do it. So that's yes. how you always are going to pair. You're always going to do something such a good way to say lighter. It. Yeah, yeah. Because the way I look at it is, I like them to be even, and I okay. like them to kind of balance each other out. And th- and some people like most people like it when the spirit shines and the cigar complements it. So that's why a lot of people will do a light cigar with that, like a you know a big red, or like you know a, an old fashioned, like a rye old fashioned, or whatever it may be. They want the spirit or the alcohol to shine and the cigar to be the complementary product. But you like the totally. cigar to shine, and the and you like the opposite of most people. Yeah, and that that is a great way to put it because that is how I feel with all this. However, this pairing specifically. I'm getting exactly what you're saying with what you like because it's like, I think I said earlier, it tastes like an extension of the cigar. I feel like that's how it's supposed to be is continuing as I sip. I'm like, Oh, that still feels like it's part of the cigar. Whereas Mm -hmm. normally I'd be sorry. That's that's how it works in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's how, that's how I always try to do it. Cause that's how it makes sense to me in my palate, my brain. And you like to do that. Are, do you think you're going to continue to try to do more like this? Or do you think you're going to stick with your normal your normal pairing method? I don't know. Like if you went with a barrel I don't strength. Know. If you went with a barrel strength bourbon, are you going to go like huge, like heavy cigar? Yes. I okay. Oh, I also so. don't normally like pairing things really higher than normally. I'm like. Bottled and bought, hundred proof is like my sweet spot for most cigars, because I like to taste yeah. everything in the cigar. Yeah. Um, so I don't normally grab like uh, an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or uh, an old Carter or something like that and grab a cigar with it. Unless so I'm you just, drink like an old Carter I'm by itself. Unless I'm there to drink whiskey. If I'm there, well, yeah. but for instance, if I go to your offices and then I clear my lungs and liver for the week prior, I. And grabbing, I'm there to drink a lot of whiskey and try really cool whiskeys. So I'm looking for a cigar that's like not going to be overtly offensive, sounds like a bad word, but like overpowering. 
Like at Pinky's all. Out is a, per- is a perfect I'm, situation for this. Which is how we came with Pinky's Out and the name and everything. Yeah. Is we wanted it to feel like it could be a part of your whiskey. It could be part of your cigar yeah. nights. It's like mm. all of that. Yeah. Pinky's Out is the, that, Coil, like different things like that. Where Coil has like distinct flavor, but it's not super loud. Lineage. Yeah. Like those are the cigars I would grab when I'm there with you because I want to drink mm-hmm. a lot of whiskey and have a cigar that's going to be great. It, it, it's not going to overpower what I'm trying to taste in the whiskey. The whiskey might, certain ones will kind of overpower the cigar, but I'm there. If, it depends on my mindset, if that makes any sense. What do of I course, want to yeah, taste yeah. more or enjoy more? If I'm going to taste whiskey, of course I want to have a cigar in my hand, but I don't want it to be the main focus. So you really do go back and forth. Yeah. Generally, you like the cigar to be the focus. I'm just finding this out. I feel like I'm in therapy. <laughs> no, it's just, it's, it's just, you know, how how people work it's just it's just different for everyone so if you're if you're Pairing a whiskey focused you like a lighter cigar yeah if, if you're if you're whiskey focused or spirit focused you're doing a lighter cigar and if you're cigar focused you're doing a lighter spirit or or beer yeah. or whatever it may be okay yeah i guess that's it it depends on the focus wow I'm learning like, so much if about we have all carpet today. together i go like blind faith or magic toast right and i no shot yeah well actually that'd be, no, that'd be a no long day it for depends you. on what my mindset that, is yeah it would be yeah that'd be a long day for you I love Magic Toast. I I love that cigar. How how has uh, you guys released the Magic Toast box press right at PCA? Yeah. How, does it? Is there any like big differences you found when you did the box box press version of it, or is it just it's a box press version of Magic Toast? Like, <laughs> so because um, I'm mad we couldn't I, get any. Frankly, no, so I was supposed to do an interview, and okay. they're like, "Hey, you need to talk about the new box pet box press Magic Toast," and I go. What do you want me to talk about? We took a round cigar. We made it square. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was Alec Rubin. Thank you for coming on today. <laughs> no. So what we what we actually did was we made it a Grand Toro and box pressed it so that it would feel more like a regular. It was it's a 54 Toro box oh, press, okay. which feels like feels like a 51, let's say okay. in your mouth. It feels like a 51. And then when you box press something, you always have to adjust for the percentages on box pressing. So you have to adjust the filler a little bit. So like, those are the little. Meaning if you packed it the same as a round cigar and then you box press it, it would be too tight. You wouldn't be able to draw. You have to add it. You have to go a little bigger and add a little bit more tobacco on the filler when you press it. Yeah. Oh, you actually have to add more tobacco. Yes. Oh, I didn't know yeah. this. Yeah. Well, I guess racially, um, like when you're looking at the ratios, um, it probably is because you're going bigger size. It might be just about the same amount of tobacco. It might not be extra. But you're still, you're having. You to have to account for the play press, with it, which, test it, yes, and see yes. what, depending on the tobaccos, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. If they're more oily, if they're larger tobaccos, whatever. Mm. Okay, so there's still. It's not just like hey box press this and put into production like you're still having to sample it in the box press to make sure ratios are yeah. working yeah i mean but if you make the whole thing box press you don't have to do that it's only when you're now only making one size in box press which right. i wanted this to be a full launch they decided you know exclusive and or limited edition <sighs> when are you gonna start winning these conversations yeah yeah what a uh, you've known me for how long now and when do i ever win <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you win with me sometimes Occasionally, I think maybe that's why we're friends. Um, what? Well, Probably, <laughs> dude. When are you gonna come out with your own whiskey brand? That's what I want to know. I don't know if we'll ever come out with our own whiskey brand, but I think that there's the opportunity to do like single barrel picks coming up soon. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, you did it. If you yeah, can do it, I can do it. If you if you can do it, I can do it. You did it first. A, yeah, but I already knew you were <laughs> trying to do it. Right? You already inspired me without knowing. I didn't even know you when you were already working on it. It doesn't matter. I felt you in my okay. spirit. It's sitting behind you. It is. It's right here. Mm-hmm. You have one. I do have one. Well, I actually um, was talking to Paul from few last week, and I think we're going to do another one, but we're going to do his rye, mm-hmm. which is my favorite from his line or his rise. I love, okay. love them. You had it with me up on the rooftop at the old office. Yes, I did. Um so we might do like a rye pick um, or something like that. You know, it'd be cool to do like a blended whiskey with Alec and Bradley and Cigar Club and Few and do like a crazy ass label and 
like blend it to some cigar. I don't know. That'd be yeah. fun. Well, let's do it. I'm in. This this podcast is just our normal conversations, but now people get to hear them. That's pretty true. <laughs> this is how we come My, up minus, with ideas. Is yeah, l- less interviewee, but like most of our ideas are like, hey, I was thinking about this. We should try and do that. And you're generally like, okay, when when? It's like, whoa, I haven't even. What do you mean when? It's like, yeah, it's already done. We can do that. No problem. When? When are we doing it? Yeah, how, honestly, how let's you, just do is it. Is that just you? Or like, where does that come? Like collaboration will make it happen. Like that enjoyment of making what you do fun every day, whether you're trying that's, to or not, it's there. That's the one thing that Bradley and I always talk about is if it's not fun, there's no point in doing it. So every project we do is meant to be fun. So when someone brings up a cool idea or a fun idea or something I want to do, I'm like, okay, let's just do it. Why not? Yeah. What's the point in yeah. over discussing it? And let's just have right. a good time doing it. Because right. if you notice, all of the Alec and Bradley releases are super different. They're always fun. Um, we always yes. enjoy doing it. Yeah, there's stress behind it. Like, I think it took us a year to finish the artwork on Kintsugi. But oh my God. that was that was just us being crazy and getting it in our heads. And But the process is always a good time. Blending is always fun. Working on the artwork is always fun. Coming up with the names. And if there's, you know, we get to work with good people and we get to do cool things cool shit essentially yeah in the process why not yeah you want to do a few pick with us let's do a few pick let's go blend something yeah. let's yep. put a cigar behind it it doesn't have to be so difficult to get to yes all the time it's just let's Ooh. have a good time doing it you should write a freaking book titled that it doesn't have to be so difficult to get to yes all the time and other memoirs it by alec rubin it just doesn't <laughs> it can be fun no, it's like, true this, this, dude it's we're so, in a I fun totally industry agree. Yes. Yeah, we're in a fun industry. If this, if this is, if you're stressed working in this industry, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> it's such a good time. He's preaching, folks. No, it, it's no. I'm just saying yeah. the people that the we, that we work with are awesome. The consumers are yep. awesome. Like, why not? Why not enjoy yourself? I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. What um, are you are you working on any new a Alec and Bradley things right now, or like what's the what's your like core focus these days around the office? You just launched Kintsugi not too long ago. You got some mm-hmm. new exclusives with different um, like retailers coming out. Like, what's your focus? Are you mastering your blending? Are you working on current inventory and, and perfecting it and keeping it the same? Like, what are you doing? So we're we're working on a lot of internal things right now. Um, currently on the Alec and Bradley side, we're working on growing our three lines and also doing you know exclusives like Pinky's out. Um, that's what that's where we're focusing there. On the Alec Bradley side. Um, we did the PC exclusive. We are taking all of our box counts to 24, as you know. Yep. And we from 20. Yeah, from 20 to 24. Some of them were 22 already, so making them all 24. We I don't know if you know this. We changed all the names on Tempest. What? Yeah. Like Tempest Natural, Tempest Nicaragua, that, or like the no, size le- names. The size names, like, like Imperial Genesis. and Gen- yeah, okay. yeah. So that we're going to regular Why? size names. Oh, like torpedo, re- robot. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember because of that what one are. time, dude. Because of that one time where <laughs> I was was were we in the warehouse and I'm like, we hey, do you have warehouse. Imperial? And you're like, I don't know what the hell Imperial is. <laughs> yeah, that's oh exactly why. I mean, it wasn't that one, just that one scenario. It was all of it them was. added up, right? So no, it was that one. It was that. It one. was that one scenario. So yeah, we changed all of the names to, to normal, and that's been around for over ten years. So that's a big deal wow. for us to change that. Mm-hmm. And then we have um, a limited edition dropping in the next month or so. That's going to be super cool. I want it. I'm sure you can buy some. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. I want to buy some. Yeah, I'm sure that's not an issue. All right, good. Um, it's that's going to be super cool. And then we're working on a cigar that's surrounded. Um, that's like it. So this is our 25th anniversary at, at Alec Bradley. So this cigar will be representative of the 25th wow. anniversary of Alec Bradley. And that's going to be a big project. Wow, it that's might, a big deal. It that's might a big not, milestone. It might not launch in our 25th year, <laughs> depending on how long it takes us to finish this up, <laughs> but. It, it will it commemorate meant the 25th year. It's meant, yeah, it's not going to say like 25th anniversary on it. It's just a really cool project that we're working on that will commemorate 25 years. That, I'm super excited big, about that one. That's a big freaking milestone. I know. I know. That's a quarter century. 
I know. In this bit. That's Bradley's life. That is Bradley. Uh, yeah, he's 26. <laughs> Al- almost. Almost. That's, m- that's 95% of Bradley's life. That's, yeah, the majority of it's it. It's a for big sure. deal. It is a big deal. Wow. And, you know, it's really about celebrating the 25 years that we've already um, experienced and looking, yep. at, looking at the next 25 years. So this project. Oh, man, I can't wait gonna, for that. Yeah, this project's gonna like kind of commemorate that, and you'll you'll see. I mean, I think I may have told you personally a little bit about it. So, I, I mean, think you that's, have. That's, I'm just I'm gonna plead the fifth here, though. Yeah, yeah, it's an exciting project. I'm I'm very excited for it. Uh, likewise, I think it's gonna be awesome. I think I think one making it 25 years in any industry, starting with a one one person that that builds it to something that it is today but then making it 25 years in a family business is even more compelling to me like you guys are still related legally nobody has been killed and we'll see you all three show up to work every day we'll see within the next 25 (laughs) years if bradley and i are are are, (laughs) have not killed each other or are still legally brothers you're still legally brothers (laughs) i just i just own him as my brother yeah (laughs) yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you can have that could be a whole nother spin off brand. Anyway, we won't go down there. Uh dude <clears throat> I can't believe it's already been forty five minutes. I know. I, it's we need to make this minutes. more of a regular occur- occurrence, I think. We do, it's just we don't usually have it on camera. I know, but we, we will because I, I, I just really enjoy this. I there's certain people that will actually give you the real inside scoop and and the the things that are to me actually very interesting uh that i think a lot of people have questions for but it's not something you can just like look up or listen to like a a release interview or a launch of a new brand and there's an interview with the brand owner or brand face on you don't get all of this kind of inside inside information makes it seem really like well no secretive but it's just real you talked about this the other uh, one of the podcasts recently you said some people are like, no, that's like where the secret sauce is made and other people just open up everything to you, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I listen. I listen to your podcast. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so, I mean. 17? I am. I'm number 13. <laughs> um, Bradley's 14. Yeah, Alan's exactly. 15. Exactly. Your wife is 16, mine is 17. Um, <laughs> no, I heard your wife doesn't listen to the podcast. She doesn't? No, that's what I heard. From who? I'm this friends with your family numbers. Oh my god, I'm scared now. I'm gonna I'm gonna call her out on that when I get home. Okay. Uh, I know she uh, tunes in for the Griffin Dave show every Friday. Does she really? We need most Fridays. Oh, she, yeah. She she doesn't like. She's me normally on there commenting, dude. I've never noticed, and I talk a lot of shit to you on those things. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, dude, I next time you're up in Cincy, we're all getting together. She's finally gonna meet you. Yes. The man, the myth, the legend. Whenever she's like, "Who are you on the phone?" I'm like, "Alec." She's like. You're always on the phone with Alec. I'm like, Alec is my friend. Of course I'm always on the phone with him. Tell my wife the same thing. Exactly. Both the Chris's will understand eventually. Yes, they will. Uh, well, anyway, dude, thank you for making some time on short notice. Of course. To come on the cast. I always enjoy these conversations. I feel, yeah. again, I feel like it's just our normal conversation, but it's kind of cool to share a lot of this with people that don't really know a lot of the behind the scenes or don't really know all that goes into more than just releasing a cigar every year or every couple think, years whenever you do i think it's cool for people to see the relationships behind the business right so totally i don't who knows what they think who knows if they just think like we talk occasionally and we come up with an idea or i pitch you an idea or whatever it is and it just kind of gets done no like there's a lot of conversation all the time 80 yep. percent of the time we're not even talking about work or cigars or whatever it may be we're talking about our lives and you know, just shooting the shit as friends, essentially. And then in those conversations, we just come up with ideas. And yes. Yeah. And yes. That's and that's how- the first thing we ever noticed. I ever noticed when working with you. It's like we could talk for an hour and maybe 60 seconds is like, oh, by the way, I got that order that came through today. It's going out the door or, hey, this would be a cool idea to do. And it's like, oh, yeah, OK, let's do it. Talk that's, to you tomorrow. The cool, that's the cool <laughs> thing about, about this, this industry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's that's the cool thing about this industry is. You get to work, you get to play, you make great friends. It's just great people here. So we're fortunate for what we get to do. Oh, God, dude. It's about to overflow. What did you do? I don't know. Sorry. You were, that was a very meaningful, nice thing you said, and I almost ruined it. 
Um, I fully agree, Alec. Nothing new. Nothing new. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyway, we'll have you on more often. I really enjoy this. I we appreciate can, it. There's got to be some that. type of pairing therapy. I really like that idea with Alec Rubin. Uh, anyway, the big boy is going to get rolling. We're going to get rolling. Cigar Club family, thank you, for as always, for tuning in. Every Tuesday, we're dropping new podcasts. Um, having conversations like this that I think is what this industry is all about. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you like this video. Download it. Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, and of course, we're on YouTube. Uh, until next week, thank you guys for listening and for watching. Happy, happy smoking. We'll see you next time.